Good morning. It's time for Daily Chapel at the LCMS International Center in St. Louis. The text is Luke chapter 18, verses 9 through 14. The Reverend Doug Ribbonaw is preaching. The broadcast of Chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. The reading for today is from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 18. Jesus also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and treated others with contempt. Two men went up into the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, prayed thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I get. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even lift up his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. O Lord, have mercy on us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. To be quite honest with you, I I like the hymn that we sang today, but I think perhaps there would be one more fitting, hymn 611, but I think the variata fits. Chief of sinners though I be, there are some here worse than me. That's not how it goes, right? Chief of sinners though I be, Jesus shed his blood for me. Today the church commemorates St. Hannah. Hannah, the favored wife of Elkanah, the Ephraimite, the devout mother of the prophet Samuel. Samuel, as you might recall, was born after years of bitterness and barrenness, of Hannah being taunted by her rival in the household bruised, abused, because she was barren. Elkanah would seek to console her. And when he went to the temple, he would give her a double portion, because he loved her. But she would not eat, and she would weep bitterly. In 1 Samuel, we hear how she went to the temple crushed in spirit. Nowhere else to go. Speaking in her heart only, her lips moving silently. And the priest Eli looked and judged. Who is this mad and drunken woman with the audacity to come into the temple snookered off her backside? How disgraceful. How long will you go on being drunk? Put your wine away from you, he said. And Hannah said, No, my Lord. I am a woman troubled in spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I have been pouring out my soul before the Lord. Do not regard your servant as a worthless woman. For all along, I have been speaking out of my great anxiety and vexation. Hannah stood in the presence of the Lord. Well, let me correct that. She didn't stand. She humbled herself, buried herself into the ground because she had nowhere else to turn. And so it is with the tax collector in the parable our Lord told us today. He could not stand before the Lord. 
groveling, he could not even lift his eyes up. Buried into the dirt, his head held low. In some traditions, beating his chest, God be merciful to me, a sinner. Perhaps even you might, in the original Greek, see a definite article. God be merciful to me, the sinner. There is no one worse than me. I am wretched, horrid. I cannot lift my eyes. I have nowhere else to turn. Far too often, when we are confronted with sin, we feel the prick of the law, we confess, we are forgiven. But the old Adam is wily and strong. See, in our flesh, often I found we each have a, a sort of favorite sin. Or one that our flesh is absolutely addicted to. A slave to something that, that we cannot overcome as hard as we try. Left unchecked, left unconfessed, the law pricks at this sin. And our sinful flesh grows its callous. So oft do we commit this same secret, favorite sin of the flesh that eventually we do not recognize the sting of the law. How much was that like the Pharisee? He does all these good works. And indeed, they are good and laudable. He tithes. He fasts. No doubt he helps his neighbor when his neighbor has need. He's friendly, he greets the people on the street. He speaks, well, he speaks wisdom. At least the wisdom of the Pharisees, the wisdom of the law that tells you what you should and should not do. See, the favorite sin of the Pharisee, and perhaps the secret favorite sin of each of us fallen children, is that we've convinced ourselves we don't really need God. That each sin has a certain particular weight. And some are bigger than others. And if you do just enough good works, maybe if you do all sorts of good works, that that offsets the balance. When the day of judgment comes, you can stand before God and say, look, I'm a good guy. Oh, yes, I'm a sinner, but on the whole, I'm pretty good. You got to let me in, right? If we have no need for forgiveness, or if we can somehow offset the bad with the good, what is the point of the man born of the seed of woman to crush the serpent's head? What need have we of a savior if we can somehow work the balance sheet out? See, on the outside, a Pharisee looks perfectly good and kind and wonderful. The tax collector himself may very well have done many of the same things. He's kind and friendly to his neighbors. He doesn't grimace when the tax collector comes around and people hurl insults at him. But he knows that there is no cure for the sin within him. No amount of good works could ever save him from God's eternal wrath. And he, more than the Pharisee, is reminded of that every day. In my own life, I was once confronted with my, my favorite sin. A sin in my youth that I had grown rather accustomed to. 
to the point where it didn't even feel that concerning or troubling at all. But God, in his mercy, though I did not understand it as such, dragged that sin into his light. And I could no longer stand like the Pharisee and say, I thank you, God, that I'm not like all these other people with these terrible sins that they do. I'm generally a pretty good guy. No, I was crushed. And I had nowhere else to turn. I first thought to turn to myself, as the old Pharisee in me says. And thanks be to God that, that in his mercy he had given me a mother and a father who would speak to me God's law and his gospel. The instruments the Lord appointed to deliver to me salvation. To hold me in that light that I could pound my breast and say, God, be merciful to me, the sinner. to speak with groanings deeper than words. And to hear of Jesus. Of he who has borne my sin, no matter how many times I committed it. To forgive me. To give me his spirit that I could recognize the sin and repent and then to be called by his gospel and be forgiven. That I may then go from that place back to my home, justified, not because I am so much better than everyone else, but because I have a savior who is greater than all. So to Hannah, having heard God's word from the priest Eli, go in peace. She went her way and ate, and her face was no longer sad. <coughs> For chief of sinners though I be, God has shed his blood for me. And how great is his compassion. Thanks be to God. And may the grace and mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ guard your hearts and your minds in his gospel until life everlasting. Amen. Thank you for joining us for Chapel. The broadcast of Chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. To learn more about LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces, visit kfuo.org slash chapel.